This week on Tech Tips, you guys asked about fret sprout. Fret sprout is when a guitar neck has been fretted and the neck afterwards shrinks. This is caused by it drying out. When it shrinks, the frets are now wider than the neck and they look like they sprouted out, which is why we call it fret sprout. This is a problem because the fret ends tend to be sharp and they don't feel too good on your hands and sometimes they actually can cause some cutting on your hands, which is even worse. So there's a couple ways to fix this. One of the most common tools I see a lot of people using are these, but they're not intended for correcting fret sprout. And although I think you could use these and I've seen people use them all the time, it's not my preferred method. Let me show you my preferred method. For this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite tools for doing fret sprout. This is my all time favorite tool right here. There'll be a link in the description. One of these is always fantastic. This is a must and of course some painter's tape. With these, I can pretty much take care of any fret sprout. What's interesting about this is when I did the restring event at the uh, Sam Ash store, this is something I actually did in front of a lot of viewers and a lot of customers. I, I did these fret sprout corrections. Um, if you have fret sprout and it's minor, one of these is really fantastic. Now this is basically like a cuticle file. I get these from Stu Mac. I just like the quality of them. But again, you can find variations of this easily on Amazon and of course at the uh, local Walgreens or drugstores. Just, you know, be, be weary and experiment with it. These are great because they have three different surfaces. This is the most coarse, then this little finer, and then of course this is really fine. I want to say this is probably like 12,000 uh, grit. Uh, so you understand this is probably more like 1,500. These are great if you have just little issues that you want to correct and take care of that. Now I'm using this guitar because it has binding and that's going to be a question. What if you have a maple neck fretboard that has gloss cover on it? Or if you have a Paul Reed Smith with gloss neck or of course binding? Well, the best thing you can do is use some tape and cover up these frets. So I'm going to do that first because I think that's the most important thing to do is protect everything around the fret that you're going to be filing. I did that on purpose to show you. This is how you would tape off a fret if you're going to do the entire fret and polish it. That is not what we're going to do today. We're not going to polish this fret. We're going to take care of the fret ends. So let me show you a faster way to take care of fret sprout with tape. The first thing we want to do is just tape off the side of the fretboard. Line it up and use your fingers to make sure that the, there's, the tape is writing right underneath each fret. So the next thing you want to do is you take another piece of tape and now you'll cover the actual frets and use a lot of force. Use your thumb like this, to push that down. Okay, so in this case, this has fret sprout real bad. This is the file I use. I love this file. I've been using this forever. In fact, uh, I have a newer one, <laughs> but this is just, I love this one. And here's how I use it. Basically what I do is I hold it just like this. See how the fingers are right here? Putting the fingers against the neck and see how I'm using my, I'm gonna come from the behind. You see, like that. See how you're holding that? I know it's kind of hard to see, like so. Push it against the sides. So I'm holding the file flat. See how it's flat? I want it to be flat, not at an angle. See, it's not an angle, flat. Now, Watch what happens with a little force. You can already hear it. And of course, all the frets are sticking out. And you use your fingers just to make sure you're not riding hard on the frets. Okay, peel the tape off. It's already a lot better. And to show you a difference, let's do this. Let me use a piece of tape on my fingers, like so. That's what that looks like. That's the difference in those sides. Okay, so now what's great is leave this bottom piece of tape the way it is, and that's why you're gonna use this file. And I love this file. What I love about it is, as you can see, it's rounded on one side, this side right here. 
flat on this side. This rounded side allows you to not cause any damage to the fretboard. And what you will do is come at an angle. See how I have it like here, at a downward angle. Like so. And you know, you could go back and forth, but I don't. I like to go in one direction and just round off the fret. And the trick I use, see how I'm pinching the end of the file with my fingers here, and I have a th finger there. Now this finger is pushing like that direction. And what happens is that lets me have great control of these. So I'll go back to this one. And so I feel like the entire time, I don't feel like it's gonna slip. Like if I was just doing that, it goes crazy. Um, it just lets me have force against the fret. And um, if I wanna do some smooth, like, see? And the same thing, notice how I tilt this finger to kind of push. That's the real trick of this, just finding that spot, pushing the finger here. And when I come downward, I'll put it on this side. And again, holding it on that side. If I do back and forth motions like I'm doing, I, mo I make sure I always finish with just the smooth downward. Now this is the part I like the most, watch this. So I've removed all the little burrs around the sides. Smooth, obviously you can see compared to that one. This one compared to that one, nice. But this is where I'll use that cuticle file and watch what happens when I compare this one to this one. Use that 12,000. And if you want, you can even, and I don't worry about when, at this, at this, at this grit, I do not worry about the fretboard. Uh, that's what I like about it. I feel pretty, I can be pretty liberal with what my usage. Look at that. Man, it feels fantastic. Yeah, look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, so uh, you just uh, kind of continue doing this up and down the fretboard. And this will be a huge difference. Now, the big trick is a little goes a long way. Do not just sit there and saw at these frets like this, right? Uh, even if you think it's got a long way to go, you know, I hate to say it, sled, slow and steady wins the race. Um, if you don't have the temperament to move slow, then you probably don't have the temperament to work on guitars. You know, you, you're gonna realize that you'll spend more time fixing the problems uh, that, uh, that you created if you try to move fast, if you try to be move quickly, um, it, it really is a delicate thing. If you're really concerned about your guitar, obviously this is a very inexpensive guitar. If I was very expensive guitar, doing the painter's tape on every section is probably a good idea. But in the case that I'm doing right now, I'm not gonna be causing damage. Like I said, I'll show you one more time, this rounded file will not cause any scratching or scarring. Especially, I, I'm not pushing, just like the other thing you need to be aware of too. I'm not really pushing down. I'm not trying to, you know, take chunks off. I'm doing this just for illustration purposes. I mean, look at that, how much material I moved so quickly. This is light, very light. Like I said, I'm holding the fret, but I'm not pushing down. I'm not forcing it. It's a light, light, steady. Just round and polish. And then you're done. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you thumbs it up and maybe share it. I wanna thank the patrons for sponsoring these type of videos and making them possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe and make sure you get notified every time they come out. And until next time, know your gear. Yeah.